Sometimes mm. I see people who are praying for spouses. Mm. And uh, sometimes it's not that God has not answered them. Mm. But you look at them and you ask, could you marry yourself if it were you married? Sometimes it's their character which needs to be well, worked on also. But we see Daniel, while he was praying to go to help mm. them, Daniel at the same time, he was doing what he ought to have done. He was respectful, mm. he was courteous, he was modest in his manner, mm. and he was a meek man. Those are hard words. In the great university of Babylon, four more entrants have come in. Along with many other Hebrews whom we never hear about, there are four distinguished young men. Daniel, Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael. They get face to face with contradicting values and principles espoused in Babylon, which were against the principles of God. This becomes a contest watch. But how this affects me and you in our daily lives we shall know in this episode of The Microscope. I am Benjamin Habasa, and this is The Microscope, a program where we take a closer look at the biblical events and characters, and realize in the end that these are not mere stories. Hello, welcome to another episode of The Microscope. Daniel and his associates have finally reached the mighty land of Babylon. As they see the well-decorated temples shining with the most polished gold that the land could furnish, they see the riches which only were in their imagination before. They see hanging gardens. They see every metropolis of the world has sent delegates course involuntarily because they were captives and their eyes are all aghast. What is this? They are finally in the land of Babylon. I am with Brother Marvin today and I'm Benjamin. We are continuing the story of Daniel the prophet and his captivity, how God plays out in the entire story to work out his entire will for Israel and for the world at large. After arriving at Babylon, mm. Daniel and his friends immediately entered into a forced university, a forced course of intensive studies mm. at the University of Babylon, where they had to learn the culture and the language of the people to whom they were going to be serving. Mm. Based on the verses uh, in Daniel chapter 1, verse 2 and verse 3, we see that um, the king tried to reform these men. Mm to force them into the practices and uh, customs of the Babylonian Empire. In fact, the king gave them several things. Mm -hmm. One of the things he gave them, the Bible tells us, that he gave them in Daniel chapter 2, mm -hmm. I'm reading from verse, verse four, 4, the children in, children in whom, okay, let's pick it from verse 3. Okay. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of eunuchs, mm -hmm. 
and he should that he should bring certain of the children of Israel mm. of the king's seed and of the princes mm. children in whom was no blemish mm -hmm. but well favored and skillful in all wisdom mm. and cunning in knowledge mm. and understanding science mm. and such has had ability in them to understand in the king's palace mm. and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue mm. of the Chaldeans. Wow. Now, I find it fascinating that it was a three-year course. Mm. This is actually the standard of most courses that we study in the universities of the present day. Mm. Either we draw inspiration from there, or the science is perhaps the same way. The, the science of knowing that a course is mostly understood in about a three years time frame mm. is a common one that, uh, that pervades both education systems. Mm. I find one interesting thing that he was looking for in these young men. That the King James Version says, such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace. Now the previous one is saying, uh, but well favored, skill in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science. science. Mm. Now another Bible say, version says, children who are teachable in science. Mm. The goal was to do what? To teach them. So they were looking for open-minded people whom to teach. And what better way to destroy a nation than to reteach, to reformat the brains of the intellectuals. Actually, the other thing I see from this very verse mm -hmm. was um, looking at the education of the children of Israel then, mm -hmm. that um, the first education was always happening mm -hmm. at the hands of the, the parents, parents the mother. where the mm. mother was the first teacher mm. to the child. Mm. So by the time this child was growing up, we, pick, we see from Israelites, one of the things they used to teach their children right away from the start, mm. away from the Bible and the songs of deliverance, mm. and away from, um, one other thing was they were learning a skill, oh. a practical skill they had. Mm. And also one of the things we see in the schools of the prophets, these people were being taught they were knowledgeable in songs, yes. in prophecies, mm -hmm. and also the other thing was uh, even there was science which was being taught unto them, even then from the children of Israel where they were coming, coming mm -hmm. from. So when the king is even calling for the men, mm -hmm. he's not looking for just casual, boy, casual, casual young mm -hmm. men. He always he wanted cream. Uh, just a random thought, it always disturbs my mind. Mm. Why, when we are looking for people to serve God, mm. normally people will look at you when you're serving God and they think you're someone who has failed to get any other option, any other option to do. When <laughs> I look at this, I see that mm. even the king was looking for the best yeah. of the best. Mm. And I always ask people, mm. if the kings of the earth can have the best of the best, mm. what then stops the king of the universe to have the best of the best in his, <laughs> in his service. Now, interesting. When you remember that Satan is a, a counterfeiter, mm. it brings us back to the fact that actually that's what God would have done from the beginning. Mm. It's we who do not give him that option. Many times, uh, uh, Ellen White gives an example of young men who in their education, they divide education into two phases. Mm. The phase of studying and the phase of working. Mm. And by the time they finish the phase of studying, they are no, in no way fitted for practical Proper. life. Mm. And mm. their life hits them hard and hits mm. them hard. You know what the first thought that always comes to their mind? I think I'm meant for ministry. Meant, yeah. mm. These things are not my mm. things. Mm. But God would have wanted that to be the very first. If you believe, wow, I think I'm gifted and well endowed, mm. ministry should be the first thing to click in the mind. Mm. And Satan is always very fast when he sees a, someone uh, well endowed, mm. he is so fast to grab them into his ministry. I'm not surprised that um, Nebuchadnezzar, he mm. looks for the best. Mm. Thank you for that uh, drawing it a parallel between Satan and uh, looking for the wise men. Mm. I can also see Nebuchadnezzar does the very same thing. He looks for the best mm. to serve him. Mm. Actually, the education he offered them Mm. was an education which basically taught uh, them rationalism and explaining away uh, some of the things they had learned where they had grown. You okay. know, unfortunately today, mm. 
some people are having an education where it's based more on the opinions of men mm -hmm. than the word of, of God. Mm -hmm. uh, we must always put what first? God, God or, first. or man first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I imagine Daniel in the mighty university of mm -hmm. Babylon. Grappling with making the two things uh, come, oh, together. Nice, come together. Gods mm -hmm. and man. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. still amazed, you know, the same battle Daniel had then mm -hmm. is the same battle many of us as young men face even today. Mm -hmm. Many times as we look at these Bible characters, we try to think they were in a perfect universe mm -hmm. where they were not being tempted, mm -hmm. where they're not having issues in their education. Mm -hmm. But if you study your Bible keenly, mm -hmm. you will discover they were facing the same challenges mm -hmm. you and I are facing even today. Daniel had issues in education mm -hmm. right away there and then. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I am quick to suppose mm. that it might have been possible that Daniel was facing some Sabbath exams <laughs> since he was in the mighty University of Babylon. Mm. And with people from all faiths mm -hmm. who is together mm. in a secular uh, campus. Interestingly, the education system of Babylon was also a system that much emphasized in direct learning, mm. influencing the subconscious so that the conscious is affected by the subconscious. Mm -hmm. How was that done? They would not impose their religion upon you, mm. but rather change your diet, change your name, change your environment. Mm. Uh, we are told that later also the, the kingdoms of uh, the Greeks, they also did the same. Mm. Take the children from your conquered territories, take them to Athens. By the time they come to Athens, mm. give them just a as squires, yeah. their nation would have changed into Greece. Mm. So, uh, these kingdoms understood that trying to impose your religion on another nation by force would just ar arouse patriots mm. to fight for their religion. Mm. No, just give it to them slowly, slowly. And where does it begin? On the naming. Mm. The naming, actually, what is interesting about the naming is today, mm. people just give names randomly. I wake up in the morning, a name amazes me, and I just give it to my child. Mm. If somebody asks me why, what my name means, I may not basically tell that mm. it came from this, and this is what it meant. But in the children of Israel, mm. when they were giving names, a name had a direct meaning. Mm. There was a reason why the father gave you the name he gave you. Either circumstances surrounding your birth, mm. or what he wanted you to represent all to have. Mm. So when Daniel was given birth to, mm. his parents called him Daniel, mm. not out of the blue, mm. but they meant that God is my judge. Mm. So the, the name Daniel means mm. God mm. is my judge. Wow. And Daniel wasn't the only one. He mm. had friends mm. with him, mm. and they had different, different names. Mm. And their names also had different meanings. Mm. Now we want to look at... Uh, the different meanings of these young men. Mm. One of them was called um, Hananiah, mm. which meant the Lord is gracious. Now imagine every time Hananiah is moving through Babylon's Babylon, corridors. they are saying Hananiah, mm. the Lord is, is gracious. gracious. That was already a that powerful was, summon. Yeah, a very sum a summon of its own. I don't think Nebuchadnezzar uh -huh. would tolerate that. He couldn't tolerate that. So he decides to have a name change. Mm -hmm. From Daniel, he gives him the name Belteshazzar. And this name meant, may Bel protect the, the king. king. Now, Bel was one of the kings of Babylon. Babylon. So he wanted, wherever Daniel is moving, that people should look at him, Bel mm -hmm. protecting what? The king. The king. Mm -hmm. Yet his name meant, God is God my judge. Is my judge. Mm -hmm. When Hananiah was moving, mm. his name could have meant the Lord is gracious. Mm. But the king changes the name. Mm. And his name is called Shadrach, mm -hmm. meaning the command of Aku. Aku was one of the many gods of Babylon, Babylon. Mm. used to worship. So he says, well, for you now you are under the command of one of my gods. No longer the god of Israel, mm. but the god of Babylon. Mm. The other one was called Mishael. Mm. This comes from the, a derivative of the Hebrew name, um, mm. Hebrew name where we get Michael from. Mm. So Mike and Michelle all mean who is like God. God. Mm. 
mm. is someone of its own kind. Wow. Moving around, mm. who is like God? Mm. He gives him another name, mm. Meshach. Wow. Who is like Aku? Who is like one of my gods? Just changes one, just one aspect of the whole uh-huh. name from God to Aku. Just mm. putting his own gods. Wow. The name Azariah meant mm. God is the helper. Mm. Or God is my helper. Mm. He gave him a bed neko, meaning the servant, the servant of, of Nebo. Nebo. Nebo is still another god. Another Nebo god. Nebo. Yes, mm. one of the gods of the of many Babylon gods of still. Babylon. Wow. So we see that he takes them through the name, the name change, mm. showing them that mm. you're no longer with the god of Israel. Mm. Now you're serving my own, my own gods. Mm-hmm. Wow. Then it's interesting that when we notice that the names have power in them. Mm. For example, Daniel, meaning God is my judge, mm. ends up becoming the prophet of the judgment hour. Mm. Becomes the prophet who prophesies about the judgment of the beast, mm. the judgment given mm. the people of the Lord, and finally the 2300 days mm. of judgment. The names should always correspond to nurturing. Mm. I saw someone recently complaining he was robbed by a man called Abraham. Mm. <laughs> I was like, how dare Abraham rob me? <laughs> Mm. I always remember this young man, for example, Zedekiah. The name Zedekiah means the righteousness of Yahweh. Mm. But reading the story of Zedekiah, there isn't a single drop of righteousness. Mm. Another man who amazes me mm. is uh, in the book of Ruth, mm. we have the husband Ruth. Mm. Uh, Boaz. Bo- uh, not Ruth, Eva. sorry. Uh, Naomi. Yes. Uh, El Melek. El Melek. Mm. His name meant God. Mm. Is king. Wow. So wherever he could be moving through the society, mm. wow. they could look at God as king, king, as someone who could provide for his people, mm. even in famine. But now, when famine unfortunately, strikes. when famine struck, <laughs> the man who is supposed to pro- proclaim God as king mm. ran away and he went far, far elsewhere. Wow. What a someone he deprived the, <laughs> the nation mm. of. Mm. And so, he knew how this had very much to affect also their subconscious. Mm. As long as people are saying to you, servant of Nego, mm. whatever you do or say, it will work on you. Mm. It's only effect unknown to you, you become a servant of Nego. In our childhood, we much used to admire these celebrities, especially in the cinema world. Mm. I remember I used to call, tell people to call me Bruce Lee and then Bouncer and as long as they could call me bouncer, I would actually bounce. Mm. Uh, by then, I never knew that bouncers mean the people protect the um, big people, and then they um, box on their behalf. I didn't know much. I knew bouncing meant bouncing. So, names have a big effect, and uh, Nebuchadnezzar well knew. Mm. But he knew it didn't end on just names. He also had to attack them in the kitchen. Mm. Now, this young man, Having been from the royal seed, in Israel, kings God had already also directed on their eating. The Bible says, blessed is the nation whose princes eat for strength, strength. not for drunkenness. Mm-hmm. It was always a believed in Qatar said that the king should be a man who would very much control his mouth and his belly. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, the heavens knew that the king means you have enough food. So eat, no wonder most of them would always have uh, tummies that reflected mm. their dietary habits. And I remember the queen of Sheba, when she visited Solomon, she marveled about many things, the riches, the wisdom, but one thing that made her marvel the most was to see how the servants of Solomon ate. And I was like, wow, this is powerful. This is a wise nation with a wise God, according to how they ate. Now Nebuchadnezzar says, I must deal with you in terms of food. So we see clearly that a context is now, they are attacked also on the front of food. Mm -hmm. Education, Mm -hmm. names, Mm -hmm. now diet becomes another area Mm -hmm. where they had to face issues. Mm -hmm. If you remember in our first segment, Mm -hmm. we talked of one of the sins of Israel Mm -hmm. was to deal with their passion Mm -hmm. and appetite. Mm -hmm. So it did not go far away from there. Mm. They are also tested on the same front. Mm. But this time round, in the nation mm. of Babylon. Babylon. You know, you could say, mm. well, no one is seeing me. Mm-hmm. 
These were young men, far away from the influences of their parents, far away from anyone maybe who knew them. And I mean, we are under pressure to confirm uh -huh. and do what the king has said. He could easily say, if I had another option, uh, I wouldn't. I couldn't, but, but now, now I'm in school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Daniel and his friends mm -hmm. do something different. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us in Daniel chapter 1 mm -hmm. and verse 8, mm -hmm. the Bible says that, but Daniel mm -hmm. purposed in his heart mm -hmm. that he could not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs mm -hmm. that he might not defile himself. The chief concern on Daniel's and the friend's minds was the issue of food sacrificed to the idols. Mm. In Babylon, whenever a meal was uh, prepared, a royal meal, mm. it was prepared in such a way that the first portion, let me call it like the first fruit mm. of the meal, was given unto the idol. Then the remainder would now be partaken of by the people but now believing it has the blessing of mm. their gods. In partaking of it, it was like feasting on a meal which the God has provided. Mm. It's, for example, when, uh, when they say, in Uganda, they say, Agabude. Mm. He has provided. provided. Now we are eating together, but he is the one who has provided. Daniel and the friends will not conform to that. But also, on the other hand, this was food which was based on only passion. Health and strength were just secondary. Mm -hmm. The first thing on the block was enjoyment. Mm -hmm. Is it enjoyable? Is it stimulating? Is it rich and royal? And this, the Hebrews already knew from their nurturing that eating should be for strength, not for reverie. Actually, not only were the foods presented, but also the other things which were accompanying the foods. Mm. The Hebrews also knew that these foods which were presented were not the best for mm. their for their health. Mm. So away from the food being offered to idols, mm. Daniel also refuses to eat this food mm. on the condition that he knew already what he was expected of mm. as a royal or as a servant mm. of God. Mm. Daniel at a young age, mm. he knew what was expected out of him. This reminds me of the influence of the home serve. The home training. Yes. What do we train mm -hmm. our people? Ah. What influence do they get around their homes? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you have not trained them to stand at home, mm -hmm. how do you expect them to stand for God mm -hmm. when they have gone to the mighty Babylonian mm -hmm. universities or far, far away mm -hmm. from home? Daniel was able to stand because his parents trained him to stand mm -hmm. even in the very, okay. in the very home. Of yes. So the children now, are now in a strange land, offered food which they do not want to partake of. But as could be said, they have nothing to do about it. Or do they after the break? Katonda wande yomu gagabwe guru wona okutulo kora fabantu. Yatuo mwana womu yeka, Yesu Kristu, e yaka wano kuhunsi, na akora evi ama gero, nevi e unji sabi njinyo, eri fabantu. Fe, tusobore, okulo kolebua. Norwe songeyo, tuzibwa mwa amanyi, orwe mikisa jetufuna, okuveri katonda. Okuandi ka ebi pande. Gatuwa yo orugelo ruwapfe. Orwe birunji mukama katonda biyato kolete. Gatumu julira. Jagada kukakasa nturwana nangu. Orwana ne katonda wangi. Program. Julira mukama. Mwanuku 3 ABN TV. Weri okua. Omukisa oku julira. Mukama katonda. Biyako kolete. Eri abantu. Bategere katonda oyo. Akora, mogura mogwa fi.
okutandika ne sawe mu e yaka ungezi okuwa ku sawa bili buli saturday nange omwanjuzi wo dembe habat wano ku 3 abn tv obubaka obutaju There were several reasons why Daniel and his friends might have refused the food which was offered to them by the king. Mm. Number one, Babylon, like other heathen nations, or pagan nations, ate unclean foods. Mm. Yet it was right away when the child in Israel was being raised, mm. they knew the principles God had given on what they ought to eat mm. and what they shouldn't eat. In the book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 3, the Bible tells us, Among the animals, whatsoever divides the hoof, mm -hmm. having cloven hooves, and choose the card that you may eat. I understand and believe that Daniel had been taught this principle mm -hmm. right away from childhood, mm -hmm. from his parents' home. Mm -hmm. So Daniel is raised and told, don't eat this because of an express command from from God. Mm -hmm. Here he is in Babylon, mm -hmm. finding himself that the command of God is at odds mm -hmm. with the command of the, of the king, king of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Who will he obey? Two more principles in contradiction here. Mm -hmm. Daniel knows from principle and training, he mm -hmm. that striveth for the mastery mm -hmm. must be temperate in, in all, all things. things. Mm -hmm. But then he meets this empire of Babylon where they are not just prejudiced, but they are also misinformed. Mm. Let me show us this misinformation that is very prevalent to this date, and that was so prevalent in those days. Mm. In verse 10, Daniel chapter 1, And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king, who hath appointed your meat and your drink. Let me first put a pause there. The king appointed them their meat and drink was Nebuchadnezzar a nutritionist. How did he know how to appoint meat and drink? Listen more. For why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sort? Mm -hmm. Then shall you make me endanger my head to the king. Nebuchadnezzar actually innocently and honestly believed that this stimulating food he was giving them was and the meat mm -hmm. was the best. best for their health and, and as they mm -hmm. ate it, they become fat mm. and strong. Mm. Does it sound like what you hear today? Oh, yeah. You need protein. Mm. You need protein. You need to eat some little, some pork increases mm. the protein and more, more types of flesh. Have you heard of vitamin B12? Mm. Many things, there is that fear of, of Ashpenaz of you will be less good looking like the rest. Please mm. eat this food. Mm. But there was another third reason or another third struggle that Daniel had to deal with. Mm. And that is in the second last part of the verse. For why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sort? Children who, which are of your sort. Mm. Which means, your fellow Hebrews. Fellow Hebrews. They are eating the they food. Eating mm. Who are you? He's going to say why are four kids bringing headache yet mm. their fellows are doing this. Actually, that's another big, big challenge we normally find in our world today. Mm. You try to stand, mm. I'm putting myself in the shoes of someone at campus. Mm. You try to stand for God mm. on the issues of, for example, Sabbath exam. That's the worst. I face some of the issues whereby you stand and someone, the professor turns back and looks at you and asks you, mm. are you the first seven Adventists we have met? Uh -huh. Others have come and they have done it. Mm. What's the problem with you? We, we have been are doing you so this on Saturdays for yes. like 10 years. Are you any special? Do you want to say the only Adventist who has come through our hands? <laughs> Not any different. And unfortunately also, <laughs> sometimes our very own leaders <laughs> put us down. <laughs> Some of us are privileged to have been born to maybe elders or leaders in the church. <laughs> and you receive instructions from home. <laughs> My son, I want you to don't play this money. 
<laughs> you know it is hard earned. Mm. And you ask yourself what should I do? It's such a privilege to be at a great university. Mm. Don't squander that mm. opportunity when in Babylon. Daniel had mm. the same issue. Wow. Okay. He had pressure to confirm, mm -hmm. not only from the king, mm -hmm. all the leader of the prince of the eunuchs, mm -hmm. Ashpenaz, mm -hmm. but also from his own companions, mm -hmm. fellow Hebrews, with whom they have been brought from Israel. Mm -hmm. Others are doing it. Why don't you do the same thing? Wow. Peer pressure. I was listening with some uh, speaker, uh, 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 much, much known one, Elder C.D. Brooks, he gives uh, an experience of when they were in a seminar and uh, the doctor was teaching about unhealthy foods. Mm. And so uh, the people asked, but the things that you are saying about unclean foods, they are also true about many other flesh meats. Mm. What shall we eat and why the reason shall we give to the people who ask us why they shouldn't eat pork? Because what about pork is true about many other things. Mm. He says I give them the simplest reason. Do not eat it because God has said it is not. Mm. Many times we try to rationalize things which God has made so simple. Mm. I should not drink alcohol because it affects my liver. It is ideal, that's not a good reason. The good reason is God has said mm. it's not for you mm. to do. And so Daniel knows that aside from reason, reason should be subject to the law of God. Mm. If the two were to stand side by side, the law of God would be a shoulder higher mm. than reason and the science. Also, Daniel was not eating the unclean foods and drinking the wine mm -hmm. because this was directly contrary mm -hmm. to the principles of temperance. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us in the book of 1 Corinthians mm -hmm. chapter 9 and verse 25, mm -hmm. and everyone who competes for the price is temperate in all things. Mm -hmm. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, mm -hmm. but we for an imperishable crown. It amazes me when I look at uh, footballers mm -hmm. and uh, different athletes and men involved in different sports. Mm -hmm. It's very surprising to me that majority of them mm -hmm. are very strict on what they are eating and when they do it. Yes. But they have known something we maybe perhaps we do not know. I think otherwise. They know something which we also know, mm -hmm. but they are doing it and they are not doing it. Knowledge may not be our problem. Uh. <laughs> our problem is not doing uh. that which we actually know. But then he does something else which I find quite amazing. Mm. He says, verse 11, Then said Daniel to Melza, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. That word, when I read it, it gave me a, a fresh perspective of Daniel. He said, prove. prove. Mm. He's so sure that he's betting on it. Mm. And in, to think even severely, he's betting his own life. If they would find that he's less healthy than the others, mm. they would ask, why is he looking this way? Melissa would report, he refused our food. That would be the end of his life. Mm. Mm. So he's, he's putting his life as a stake on obeying God. And he's sure that the odds are sure. In his, in his favor. Mm. Many times as Christians, we have failed to take God at his word. Mm -hmm. I believe Daniel had been taught what God had said mm -hmm. and what he had promised. Mm -hmm. One of the promises God gave them mm -hmm. that if you were to obey my rules, mm -hmm. I will not put to you the diseases which I have put to what? The Egyptians. The Egyptians. Mm -hmm. I believe Daniel knew that promise from God. Mm -hmm. And he took God by his word. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, today as Christians, mm -hmm. we know what God says. Mm -hmm. And someone will tell you clearly what the Bible says. Yes. God says this and this and this, mm -hmm. but... Doesn't work. Mm. We but, always put a but, mm. but, but, but... let's be real. Let's be real. We are in a real <laughs> world. Well... Mm. Christian, there's an experience. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, and God is always so, so near to stand by his word in special providences. For example, verse 9. It says, Now God had brought Daniel into favor mm. and tender love mm. with the prince of eunuchs. I believe God knew this was coming. True. And he permitted this favor to exist for Daniel mm. before the prince of eunuchs. But it would be another interesting uh, 
a line of thought to know that this favor did not come merely as a supernatural miracle. Mm. Actually, we are told mm -hmm. that Daniel and his fellows, when they were brought to test, mm -hmm. they did not just move anyhowly, but they moved intelligently mm -hmm. and in the fear of their God. Mm -hmm. They decided not to eat the flesh that the king had provided to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, because, number one, uh, like it had not composed of the diet which they were used to mm -hmm. in the past, mm -hmm. also, since it wasn't part of the diet in the past, it shouldn't come to be part of their diet in the future, in the present, mm. where they were. Mm. Also, wine had been prohibited by the Bible. Yes. The Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs uh, 20, mm. verse 1, mm. that wine is, is a, a mocha. mocha. Strong drink is yeah. deraging. Mm. And whosoever is deceived by it is not, not wise. wise. Mm. The other verse I find actually about alcohol which amazes me is Proverbs 23. Mm. From verse 23 downwards, mm. where God talks about the alcoholic. Mm. Who has war? Who has <laughs> sorrow? Mm. Who has wounds without cause? Mm. He that tarries at the wine pot. Mm. The God describes exactly what happens when someone is intoxicated and mm. when they partake of them. Mm. Daniel knew this clearly. Mm. But away from that, the inspired pen tells us that the fate of the sons of Aaron had been presented before, before them. them. And they knew the use of wine could mm. confuse their senses, mm. that the indulgence of appetite could be cloud their powers of discernment. Wow. So they knew they couldn't be ten times wiser. Mm. They couldn't worship their God the way they could have worshipped him. Mm. If they disobeyed him mm. on one principle, wow. on any of the principles he had given them. One thing we forget many times is that we look at the path of temperance for only what it is we forget to look at what it might be. Mm -hmm. Let me explain it this way. We can say a person who eats this way, rests this way, drinks this way, these habits are good for their mental and uh, intellectual development. Mm -hmm. Now, a person will look at you straight in the face and say, all that you have said, I don't do. But I'm still smart. I mm -hmm. scored better than you. Mm -hmm. What they always forget is what would have been. Now, if you are performing better than me, yet you sleep badly, eat badly, do badly, now imagine how far you would have gone if you are doing it well. Daniel could have easily gone against God's appointed pattern and someone who would have still secured his place in Babylon mm -hmm. as one of the wise men. But he would have been an average wise man. Every time you ever think of somewhere ending on average, think about the possibility of ten times wiser. Mm. Man. Uh, Daniel and his companions did not know what could be the result of their decision, by the way. Mm. They did not even know if it could cost them their lives mm. or not. Mm -hmm. But they determined to keep strict obedience mm. to God. Because after all, to them, mm. God was the overall in all things. Mm. It wasn't about what man was saying. Mm. Their issue was, am I standing with God? Do I obey God in whatever he's telling me? Mm. Today we are facing that challenge. Mm. Many times I want to obey God, but at the same time, yeah, I want to please, to please men mm. around me. Daniel looked at himself and said to me, mm. it could be better to obey God rather than men. In Daniel, we see it re-echoed. What the apostles are telling us in Acts 5.29, mm. Daniel just lived just it lived that, directly. Lived that, wow. that he is willing mm. to obey God, mm. whether it means for him to die mm. or not. It reminds me also in Daniel chapter 2, starting from a, uh, rather Daniel chapter 3, mm. when Daniel tells the king, I am not careful to answer you, O king. Mm. <laughs> I mean, regarding this, mm. that I should go down and worship your image. I don't image, have words. I don't have <laughs> to think through, mm. you have given me the first opportunity, mm. I did not bow. Mm. The second time, I will still, I still want. not bow mm. to your eyes. Not a he had thought. made up his mm. mind. Wow. But going back to what you brought mm. about Daniel's being in favor with Asp Aspenas, the mm. prince of the eunuchs, mm. the inspired pen tells us this in a Youth Instructor, November 12, 1907. Mm. She says, 
This officer saw in Daniel good traits of character. Mm. He saw that he was striving to be kind and helpful, mm. that his words were respectful and courteous, and his manner possessed the grace of modesty and meekness. It was the good behavior of the youth that gained for him the favor and the love of the prince. Wow. It wasn't entirely a miracle. Mm -hmm. The heart of the king is in the Lord's hands. Mm -hmm. Favor is bestowed. However, God has ordained it in such a way that there is a human part to play mm -hmm. in the favor being. Joseph got a favor before both Potiphar and the guard, guard or the, the yeah. jailer, mm -hmm. because he was diligent in all his business. Mm -hmm. And so shall it be to this day. Uh, I know Christians, uh, I don't know where this theology comes in of. Uh, Praying for favor, I pray for favor, I believe in favor, I claim favor. Actually, favor, God not only gives it, but He puts it upon the life mm. that you live the life of favor in that you become lovely. Let me put it this way. People don't love you for who you are because you are bad. People say, it's okay, we shall tolerate you. God imparts upon you the goodness that it becomes favorable and then favor comes. I also see in the, book of, uh, in the story of Daniel mm. that man must cooperate with God in the plan of salvation. Sure. Daniel does his part. Mm -hmm. And he leaves what he cannot do to God. God. Unfortunately today, mm -hmm. we want to think that because I am serving God, mm -hmm. and I am spending all the time at church, that God will take care of my business mm -hmm. while I am neglecting to work. Mm -hmm. uh, many times I see people who are praying for spouses. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes it's not that God has not answered them. Mm -hmm. But you look at them and you ask, could you marry yourself if it were you married? <laughs> Sometimes it's their character which needs to be wow. worked on also. But we see Daniel, while he was praying to God to help mm. them, Daniel at the same time, he was doing what he ought to have done. He was respectful, mm. he was courteous, he was modest in his manner, mm. and he was a meek man. Those are hard words. <laughs> Who can take them? <laughs> And so in verse 14, Melza consented to them in this matter and mm. proved them 10 days. 15. And at the end of 10 days, their countenances appeared fairer. Now, if I may bring that into contemporary English, they looked more handsome. Mm. Their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh. Again, fatter in flesh does not mean they were obese and they had more fat under their skins. It rather means they were more well-formed, fatter in flesh. In some other point, the Bible says uh, the Lord will give fatness of bone. So fatness means like healthy generally. They had more healthy bodies than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Mm. The blessing of the Lord also increases in health. In obeying the Lord, that's where the ultimate health and excellence lie. But not just that, when he saw this after 10 days, he consented and said, I'm defeated. Let this be so for the rest of the time. Thus Melza took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. Mm -hmm. I have struggled with pulse for a long time, and especially when I notice what uh, most of the local translations I don't know what about your local translation, but in uh, one of the translations in uh, Uganda, that's the Nyankorochiga version, it says Ebihimba. Now that literally means beans. And many people have read this portion and they have sympathized with Daniel. They have seen the man who, eat, who ate beans and drank water for the rest of his life. And they see him getting uh, marasmus, like mm -hmm. it was decayed like a carbohydrate. But recently I found this fascinating. I was in one of the supermarkets in town, and then I saw a, a, a placard like demonstrating a, a certain section of goods in the supermarket. I noticed one with the word pulses on it. Now, as I read of the Bible, I was fascinated. I was like, whoo, let me go and check. I found a section spanning very many meters. It had, well, beans were there, of course but had beans, it had greens, it had uh, even uh, potatoes, mm. it had maize, 
it had almost every plant I knew, only that had fresh ones. So there was nothing processed mm -hmm. in the pulse section. And so this gave me a fresh understanding, of course, which the Bible itself explains, that Daniel, when he chose to eat pulses, basically he chose to eat fresh and processed products of the garden, mm. what a way to live. The other thing we see with Daniel, in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30, the Bible says, those who honor me, I will honor. honor. Mm. And those who despise me mm. shall be lightly esteemed. When Daniel followed the, what God had asked him to do, mm. it is not surprising mm. that he got the results came out the way they were. It's not by mm. miracle or magic that it happened to be the way they were known. That's the principle. That's it's a principle. Out. Do mm. what you do for God and mm. God will do his, his part. Wow. You know, sometimes when we are dealing with these issues of uh, eating and drinking and all that, mm. I have had many people come to me and they tell me, oh, the kingdom of heaven is not about eating mm. and drinking. Mm. Oh, my eating and drinking habits do not affect my salvation. Spirituality. Oh, mm. the Bible doesn't teach about me forsaking some things and I do others. No, mm. God will understand. He knows I want to be a witness to the people mm. around me, all that. Mm. And we have very many, many things we put across. Yeah. One of the best argument which Azura is given is uh, uh, like you talked about vitamin B12. Mm. Where are you going to get your vitamin B12 mm. and, iron. and iron and all those other things from? Mm. I don't know if it was the same concern with Daniel Hart at when such a thing was presented before him. May have been the same but at the different levels of scientific terminology. Uh, uh, mm. Well, we see that Daniel stood for God. Mm. And surely, God comes out to stand, to stand for him. Mm. And uh, there is this quote from the inspired writings I thought it was important to share. Mm. In the book called The Sanctified Life, page 19, paragraph 4, mm. we are told this. There are many among professed Christians today mm. who could decide that Daniel was too particular okay. and could pronounce him narrow and bigoted. Mm. They consider the matter of eating and drinking as of too little consequence mm -hmm. to require such a decided stand. Wow. One involving the probable sacrifice of every earthly advantage. <laughs> Continuing, mm -hmm. the writer says, but those who reason thus mm -hmm. will find in the day of judgment mm -hmm. that they turned from God's express requirements mm -hmm. and set up their own opinions mm -hmm. as a standard of right wrong. They will find that what seemed to them unimportant mm. was not so regarded of God. Mm. His requirements should be sacredly obeyed. Wow. Now, this does not only talk about the area of food. Yes, yes sometimes people, like she has talked, say mm. that mm. they regard it as a matter of, well, God doesn't care. Mm. I mean, it's not about mm. eating and drinking. Well, that quotation brings out something powerful. Mm. Uh, many arguments brought against the issue of being particular in God's requirements mm. is health and the, the functionality. Mm. But there is also another argument about the palatability mm. or the pleasantness. Mm. This verse was interesting in, to me. Daniel chapter 10 and verse 2 and 3. Mm. Daniel says, in those days I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. He says, I ate no pleasant bread, mm -hmm. neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. He says, I ate no pleasant bread. So which means that Daniel's food were pleasant, pleasant things. things. Mm -hmm. he, in the days of mourning, he just keep from. In the end, whatever we say or do, in the end we shall always realize mm -hmm. that God's ways actually were the ways yes. of pleasantness. Mm -hmm. If we followed God's direction, it will be pleasant and so enjoyable. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Psalm 16, that wonderful Messianic Psalm, he says, at the right hand, our joy is forevermore. If only, like Daniel, we would follow the Lord, we would walk in happiness and joy forevermore. This is the microscope. God bless you. <laughs>